Hello and welcome. I am Johannes. Uh, welcome to the show. I'm here today with Amara Sisse, um, who is the founder uh, and leader of the uh, Weistein Impact Lab. And, and this is in, in Nigeria, if I, if I am correct. Yeah, uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually in Nigeria, but I, I was born in Sierra Leone. So more or less connected to the two, affiliated to the two countries. Okay, great, great, great. And you are building the the digital leaders of the future in yes. in, in Nigeria. Yes. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about how you use technology and in your education and why this is important? And uh, yeah, just just tell us a little bit about your experience. Okay, uh, so actually when I was in school, I studied education in school. I discovered that there are a lot of things that are missing in terms of uh, the nexus between what people learn in school and what the society and the digital uh, growth that we are experiencing globally requires from learners. So I felt that uh, there is a very, very huge mismatch between what you spend your whole time learning in school and what is required of you after you leave school. And this is particularly true for children at the basic level. So what I felt, uh, an immediate action I felt that could be done was after leaving school, uh, start uh, designing programs around children and technology and how best to leverage technology for them. Like trying to build uh, makers of technology, even if they don't end up building apps but they view technology from the first principle. They see it as people who are not just consuming technology, people who are not just victims of technology, but people who know the right things to do with technology for themselves and for the society. So I, I felt it was very, very important to start this movement with children. So that was what I did after school, was to start a program, get affiliated to a school, a primary school, like maybe a K-12 in the American uh, instance. So I started this program and we started discussing with children around uh, what could use technology for beyond gaming and social media. And uh, how, how, do you, how do you use technology to forge your leadership skills? Uh, what, or how do you use technology to, to fast track your education and uh, access to quality education. So these were the discussions we introduced around children and their parents. And to a large extent, it was successful because uh, when I traveled to Sierra Leone, uh, so I, I, got, uh, I, I got shortlisted for a United Nations Youth uh, Innovation Award. So that was some form of validation that uh, this is really something that the world needs. So after that, we had a lot of iterations of the program. Uh, sometimes it is just advocacy. Like uh, I was a, 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 I was a very, very uh, regular host and a program called Education Platform, a TV program. So we had to talk about the nexus between policy and technology and children. And how do we try to align all these things and see that they work in the best interest of the children. Because for me, I felt everything has to, uh, the whole fabric around building great technology is children. Yeah, because, and that is uh, what is missing, usually at the design points. Even though you know that uh, the future generation are the children, they are the ones that are going to be more in the metaverse. They are the ones that are going to be more in uh, blockchain, especially maybe in the gaming aspect. But the design of uh, the technology essentially does not take into consideration their own mental health needs, 
uh, does not take into consideration their level of maturation. So these technologies are first of all designed for adults. And then children are viewed as miniature men. So these are already men, but miniature men. So instead of viewing them as children and building and designing things that fit around them. So my belief about technology is that if we design things uh, uh, around children, everybody is going to be fine. But if we design things for the market, for people who can afford it, then we now want to see how we can bring children into the bits. It is too late. So a lot of problems. And that is, I believe that is what we face with issues like Instagram and TikTok and other social media that, that uh, used the power of AI and algorithms to really cause a lot of harm for children. Uh, I, and I believe the discussion is just starting with more technologies uh, that leverage AI and the power of big data. We're going to have a lot of these problems. And that is why discussions like yours are important. Yeah, I think so. I agree. And it has to be a global one as well, because people don't realize when they build software, you know, who they're building it for, uh, you know, half the time they just think about, the, or actually most of the time they think about scaling and, uh, you know, selling to more people. And, and they actually don't, don't really have a very close relationship to, uh, to, to the people on the ground um, as you do. So that's a, that's you know a very important perspective also the the perspective of the educator in uh, with regards to uh, technology I think and that's why I'm very happy to have you on my show as well. So how do you use technology in practice um, when it comes to um, uh, currently in, in, when it comes to your educational projects? Okay, uh, so for me, I believe technology has to meet. Uh, the people where they are, like you, you it, it has to mm -hmm. it has to go to where the people congregate, not like uh, they struggling to catch up with technology, especially for children. So uh, there are mm -hmm. things that are new to them, but there are also things that they have experience about from home. So, for example, when I was designing Ten for Ten, it was an educational project that was meant to. Uh, uh, taking the whole idea of leaving no one be behind the United Nations SDG stuff about leaving no one behind to a new dimension. So uh, how do we involve children in funding the education of other children, uh, less privileged children? So we are looking at what technologies uh, will enable that. So I find out that uh, instead of trying to look at something very sophisticated, uh, just teaching children how to make a better use of WhatsApp and some aspect of Excel or Google Sheets uh, might do a lot of things instead of introducing uh, just uh, sophisticated technology just for the name, just to say that, oh, uh, this is something new, uh, this is something recent. Because at the end of the day, uh, you are trying to uh, solve problems that don't even exist with technologies that are forged upon people. So I, I, I discovered that uh, let's look at the things that they already know about, the things that they already use, are uh, things that have already worked for them in our own societies. They might not be using it the right way, but now uh, there's a leverage. Uh, the, uh, so how do, we, how do we take them from those technologies and then to places where they actually need these technologies uh, but they might not know their existence. Uh, they might, maybe they tried using it once or twice and they found it hard. But if we take them, and that is the general principle of education. Everything has to begin from simple to complex and not the other way around. So uh, that is it. Mm. Technologies that are already... Well, yeah, I uh, think that uh, it's actually a big trend. There's a big trend in technology now to, to make user interfaces more friendly, actually. So the newest things sometimes might be the things that that actually are easier to use for children. I mean, or even for, for, for anyone, really. <clears throat> um, you know, these, these graphical user interfaces that make it possible for you to build all sorts of uh, 
you know algorithms you know um you know are now available that that there there's this trend of democratization of technology and and uh you know that I've been already talking to people on uh, about on my show and I don't know if that impacts you at all so for example the fact that google translate now allows you to very easily speak with someone or or more easily speak with someone in uh, who, who speaks a completely different language and and various tools like that uh, are 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 you using any of those in uh, are you bringing children to the sort of to this kind of trend of of democratization of technology yeah uh, so basically the key goal of wisting impact lab was to see how children become leaders in technology not just consumers uh, because my 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 central thesis was that uh if you limit people to just using technology what happens is that they get to overuse the technology and if they overuse the technology it gets to affect other aspects of their life especially their mental health so uh why don't we teach them that there are technologies out there that put them in the driver seats for example a lot of uh, new uh, no code yeah. a lot of new, no code uh, tools give them the upper hand to use technology in very innovative ways so even though they are they are not the original builders of this technology but that a lot of ways they can play around it for example the google uh, translate app so it makes you feel that sense of ownership and there is that democratization of how technology is used and at the same time the ability to build on something that has already been built not just something brought to you in in the in its whole format and you don't have anything to do about it so most of the technologies we we are using especially in the web 2 uh it's you don't have any control over how to manipulate these technologies your role is small less like a, a living product like an organic product to feed data into that technology but uh with uh the new movement in technology imagine technologies and ai uh blockchain we see that there is a move towards uh democratization uh it's very very interesting for the educator because this time you are not just teaching children how to use technology but they are also teaching them how they can also uh build on top of existing technologies and also uh impact the lives of others because what i've discovered is that children uh then they are not just obsessed about technology but they are obsessed about how technology can make them uh can give them a better self esteem and how technology can make them uh be useful and how technology can increase their impact on the world so if you shift the conversation from just games social media and charts i i believe there's something they are finding there but they cannot find it and that is what leads to the mental disconnect but if you shift that conversation to things they can build upon existing technologies like for example using no code uh for example in one of our discussions with children during uh one of our boot camps so i was asking them what is the problem at home that you can use technology to build uh for example a very simple uh instance is using uh canva to design maybe a roster at home and saying okay uh this is how a workflow should go at home this is what my siblings should do and this is how our uh, things should work for example or using a uh, google uh sheets for example to 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 uh to determine maybe an inventory of things you have at home and uh who takes care of what so some form of leadership but around the basic technologies we have but now you are using them to create impact you are using them to bring organization into the home uh you are using them to to bring a, a more robust uh management of property 
So they can actually grow from this uh, data at the micro level to start thinking of how do I think of security in my neighborhood? Maybe through Google Sheets. Maybe through we have a central sheet, for example, we are uh, anybody that sees any security threat can actually upload it in real time. And everybody in the neighborhood gets uh, some awareness through Google Sheets because it's there in real time in the cloud and everybody have access to it. So I mean, basically we are looking at how do you, yeah, how do you, how do you move them from just uh, being obsessed about these technologies and using it to a point where it start affecting their mental health, their self-esteem to a point where they feel some sense of ownership. Yeah, it's also a ma matter of how old children are, right? For example, my children, they're too young to even, I, I don't want them to be exposed to screens very much. My son is uh, three, three and a half, almost, actually almost four. My other son is uh, six months old, so they're very young. Um, and I don't, I wouldn't want to have them near any kind of technology, actually. Or, I mean, of the sort that we're talking about with screens. But, but at what age do you introduce children um, uh, to, to technology? That's also a question I, I, I had. Yeah, for me, basically, I, I, I work uh, within the, the, uh, the 7 to 17 uh, prison. Uh, but I, I feel that most parents have different reasons for exposing their, their children to technology. And, and that's what makes it really, really complex uh, when you are discussing technology uh, with parents. Because uh, for some, the, the, uh, the tech is more or less like an assistant parent, and which is really, really dangerous. Because you cannot, your technology cannot take the place of that warm human touch between, for example, the mother and the child. Uh, the father's interaction with the child. Uh, but because of the nature of the economy and the fact that they have to juggle a lot of things uh, to make ends meet. So a lot of parents uh, would rather have uh, tech to substitute that quality time they have with their children. And that is why you see some parents right from age two they are exposing their children to technology because when the children are crying or throwing tantrums and they expose them to phone, I think there's something the screen does to their, to their, to their brain that makes them keep quiet or that makes them excited. So, uh, and it relieves some stress from the parent, especially when they have had a stress filled day. But uh, I, I believe it's, it, it might be difficult to put an age uh, cap on what uh, age uh, should a child be exposed to technology, except when there are very, very strong uh, research findings that uh, could apply for people. And probably it has to move from culture to culture. And sometimes the pressure is also uh, some parents, if their uh, colleagues, there's also peer pressure among parents. If, they are, if their own friends, children are exposed to technology, especially if they are doing things with technology, cool things with technology, uh, they will be under pressure to expose their own children also to technology. And uh, because they believe that uh, uh, the, if other people's children are doing it and it's fine for them, then my own children uh, should do it. But Personally, I feel uh, children should not be exposed to technology probably before the age of four or five. I think for me, uh, five year old uh, should be more about the natural environment and interacting with humans and the natural world. Because the whole, the whole, uh, yes, the whole, the whole exposure to screen. And, 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 and I, I think there's a way it permanently alters the brain, uh, which may not be a good thing yeah, at it does. an early age. Then what you were speaking, I mean, what you were speaking about earlier, this thing about not having enough time because you have to juggle too many things, then the technology comes in 
in that in that age because the parents are overwhelmed and the parents are overwhelmed because of a perpetuated this sort of perpetuates the inequality in the world it's when you have one where parenting ch children when you when you raise children in a way when you have too many other things to struggle to struggle with so many other things in 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 that kind of way with 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 technology then they will be probably not able to do to achieve as much and and then the stress will continue because they they will uh, basically it will perpetuate poverty in that way i think because it is indeed unequal the way that that happens this is a systemic inequality right here we're talking about i can uh, my wife and i can take care of our children when when we're done with work before they are in really great facilities where they are exposed to a lot of actually my, my son goes to the forest school so he's in the forest all day uh, twice a week and then the other three days He's with it's a, in a very diverse school. Um, it's it, it's a fantastic place, and, and anyway, it's very human to human, right? And then when when we're when we're done with that, then we are all here in the in the evening, and we were, we're spending the time together. So there are no screens involved in that, except that maybe every once in a while there is a video or something like this that that is um, a poetic of a poetic nature or something with some music. But but it's and then there are some people who are so overwhelmed that they have to just put them in front of the social media or whatever, and um, to basically pacify them. And then what happens is you are right; they are they are unequally affected by this technology now because they are more exposed to it, um, and so that's a, a huge un, unfairness injustice you could say that is perpetuated then through technology in a way yeah i i, I think uh there's also that aspect of uh in, in inequality and uh, access uh, the difference in access to resources uh difference in access to free time uh the difference in access to an environment that enables the children to grow at their right level of maturation. So, so many things go into it. And that is why I actually, I'm happy for people uh, like you that are shifting this discussion from just building technologies and uh, just focusing on one culture to looking at technology holistically, uh, looking at the universal appeal of technology and what problems it could, if it is solving problems somewhere else in the world, what uh, problems is it creating in another part of the world? Maybe same technology, but it is uh, very fine, attuned to the problems of Austria, for example, it is solving their problems. But when that technology uh, moves over the border and gets to uh, Indonesia, for example, it causes a lot of problems because of the uh, because of uh, the standard of living, uh, because of the exposure, lack of exposure to other technologies, uh, adjacent technologies that will make that technology more useful. So I feel uh, discussions around technology sometimes uh, there are a lot of problems around technology, and that is why we don't get it right. Uh, for example when we started discussions around blockchain, everything went to Bitcoin. Uh, nobody was looking at, uh, nobody was looking at cybersecurity. Nobody was talking about uh, the, the, the greed and uh, other aspects of life that are connected around the technology. So uh, we were fixated about the technology and what it should do in terms of democratizing access to finance. Uh, but nobody uh, looked at it from a very, very holistic point of view. And that is why discussions like this are very, very important. Because now we, we are talking about schools, education, educators, and technology. But see uh, how the, convers the conversation moved into inequality and into standard of living, mm -hmm. into... Uh, into poverty and wealth 
into a class because like what you in your own society the access your children have is it the same access uh my brother's children have or is it the same access that somebody in a war torn region for example in syria uh, uh or maybe palestine or some other place but all these children have access to the same technology right and they all use whatsapp uh they might be they, they they all have access to let's say they all have access to google play store and they can download any of these technologies but <laughs> a lot of things are around them that should aid uh the best outcome mm -hmm. for that technology are not available so at the end of the day whilst it was meant to be positive for the child in uk and uh, san francisco it is going to have negative consequences for the child in say Gaza or say uh, Lagos or say some other place that are not as developed as those societies. And that is why uh, we need a lot of, uh, not just educators, but we need a lot of designers and developers to be on your show. Because by the time we get to view uh, technology holistically, it is going to affect even the code. So, because for now there are a lot of bias in how these codes are written, because they are written on the assumption that we are living in a free and in, in a fair world to a large extent. Uh, they are written on the assumption that technology is a leveler for everybody around the world. They are written on the assumption that once people have access uh, to the software, uh, they are going to do great things with it. So you are not considering, for example, access to the infrastructure. Let's say I do not have uh, a very good internet today. Everything was set for the interview. But if I did not have access to mm -hmm. a very good internet, that would have spoiled everything. So mm -hmm. your assumption is that, uh, your assumption is that yeah. this uh, tech uh, is going to work perfectly because it is good. It is a good technology. You tried it in yeah. the UK. It's fantastic. But now you are talking to somebody uh, in the heart of Africa. Is that going to be the same outcome? So if we build technology... With we have tested it today. Technology, uh, yeah. Is it going to be a utopia? Uh, or is it going to be a dystopian situation at the universal <laughs> level? And then try to come back. You understand? If we have that end in mind. So well, I, I, I feel... I, I, yeah, I, I, sometimes I, I, we have I both at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I think I think there should be a special uh there, there should be special causes like this, for example, uh, in the university. So maybe in the long term, we'll, we'll push for having uh, a cause around utopia and dystopia of technology that developers must. It should be a compulsory cause for developers and designers because it is when people have this exposure that they build uh, technology with more empathy and. The build technology with a global outlook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That is that is what I'm after also in this show. Exactly, that is precisely it. You have well, uh, well put, well put. You you know, Amara. Actually, I I, I wanted to point out uh, another guest on on my show uh, recently. Um, has pointed out about the, the has, has spoken about the collaborative economy. Do you know anything about that? Because I think for children to get involved in in projects directly in in, in collaborative way, you were saying the word leader, but I think we're shifting. Actually, interestingly, in I don't know in, in San Francisco and in London, we're shifting toward a um, a collaborative approach of work, where where we don't have necessarily leaders or followers. Or, or um, we don't divide it quite like that, but we're thinking of it more in terms of a conversation as, as well, even the building of technology itself. Yeah, for me, I've always been an advocate of uh, a collaborative building. And that's why uh, when I studied the design thinking approach of IBM, I think something I was really interested in is the fact that uh, their users become part of the builders of the technology at some point. So uh, that mindset of uh, seeing users as co-developers, uh, yeah. I think it solves a lot of problems because you don't have to build 
Co-creators, yes, 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 yes exactly. So these, yes. Are, these are co-creators. Uh, these are the end users of the technology. I think that's right. So let's yeah. start with the end in mind. Instead of uh, solving a problem and now going into the world and say, ah, is there a problem like this? Wow. Yeah, we can do that as users, right? So if we are, yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Because if we are, if we're the users and the creators at the same time, we we will know the problem. Yes. That we're solving because we we will know the problems on the ground. So this is kind of this idea of that there is something around the shared economy, something about the collaborative economy, as it is known. Um, uh, you know, I was I was speaking uh, actually it was uh, Somil Gupta about this exact topic. So it's like we instead of um, and and then there's also this idea of decentralization of organizations at the same time, right? So which is which is yet another piece that fits in, and and I was speaking to Ashish about this, Ashish Kumar Singh, um, about this topic actually, and so I think all of them sort of fit into this educational aspect as well, right? So there is an uh, there is something about uh, educating the children for a collaborative approach that might be global, that might be decentralized. So we don't work for a company, but we are the company or we are part of it. Yes. <laughs> In a sense, that all of our lives, it's not just, uh, it, it could, could really transform into this more creative approach to work. And if you, if you learn about this early, that, that work itself, the professional world can be much more creative. Then you show up to in the morning to some boss and the boss either likes what you're doing or doesn't like what you're doing and whatever. And you spend your days there and your hours and you're ch exchanging your hours for a handful of times. Um, but instead, what you're doing is you're creating something meaningful. And exactly. through that, you're creating economic value and you are getting some of that economic value. So this this is sort of, I, as I understand these kind of things working together, the shared economy, the, the some part partial decentralization, some things have to be centralized as, uh, uh, as Somil Gupta has pointed out. So um, there is, um, I don't know. So how do you feel about that with respect to your children? Yeah, I, I, I feel... Uh... I think it's something really, really true about this generation of children. Uh, it works perfectly with their psychology. Uh, these are children that they don't want to be bossed around for any reason. And uh, they, at the same time, they want to see themselves as people who are making a lot of impact uh, in the world and touching the lives of uh, others. So if we have this uh, two... Uh, if you have these two uh, disparate uh, psyches of somebody who does not want to be bossed around, but at the same time, this is somebody that wants to see their impact in the world, I think uh, we, we need a middle ground. And that middle ground is creating organizations where collaboration instead of uh, commands are uh, the central uh, rule of operation. So if you have an organization yeah. where collaboration is at the heart of things and not just uh, bossing around, uh, giving commands, and uh, 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 trying to uh, assert the fact that you say, yeah, somebody is the boss, somebody is the manager, somebody is the supervisor, but then uh, trying to create that sense that people are coming together to create impact at a larger scale and building things uh, involved in projects that are bigger than themselves. I think if we are able to establish that for children right from the young age, we we'll start seeing interesting things. Yeah, because uh, for mm -hmm. one is that they have it's a cultural yeah, shift. For one, right? I, I, cultural actually, shift from when we are building things at Weinstein Impact Club, my first uh, thinking is they know more than us, but we are facilitating things for them. Uh, that is the first. My first. The, th the second thinking is that. Uh, they can be more focused on this because for them it's technology and technology. But for us, it's technology and life. So the moment I close my computer, I'm thinking of uh, what uh, you're thinking of uh, your status as a member of the community. You're thinking of your status as a breadwinner. You're thinking of uh, 
yeah thinking of uh, mortgage you're thinking of a lot of a lot of other issues but they have a lot of time so the best thing we can do is we expose them to those aspects of uh technology we are our leadership will be needed and 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 create that enabling platform for them so what they will do with that will be amazing unlike when we just build everything and throw it at them so the whole idea of uh creating a collaborative or a shared economy i think work best for children even more than us because uh these are a fresh breed of people with fresh ideas they just need some guidance uh they just need some mentoring and they just need to know where things could go wrong because if you are, are able to expose them to some of these basic yeah if you are able to expose them to some of these basic yeah basic uh, nitty gritties the rest of the rest of the issue they will handle it and trust me uh these guys are bold uh they are very creative and they want to be part of the world they want their names to be mentioned we are other greats have been mentioned and they want it to be done fast so uh that's something about them they want it fast so the best you can do for them is create a platform and uh tell them some of the dangers of uh, uh what's like from our own experience some of uh the loopholes so if they get to know these loopholes it's as if you are putting them on the shoulders of giants so whatever weaknesses uh, whatever whatever problems you face in building for example web2 technologies if you if you if you if you, if you create a, a collaborative uh space we are you bring your experience your failures for building for web2 and you are now taking them to the decentralized world and tell them that these are all the problems that could happen for example in a centralized exchange uh these are the problems before the ftx uh issue came up if you uh let's say for example uh you are the company we are you have people like sbf as a young man and uh you have experience in the global economy how it works and the power of greed and the power of so many other things that could go wrong in the fiat economy so you are and uh you are working with a young person like S, uh, sbf your, your your biggest role is to teach them that these things could actually creep into uh into the blockchain economy these are some of the things to really look out for you should look out for greed you should look out for things going wrong you should look out for uh the power of having a, a management and how that helps for especially financial companies so if they get to know all these things uh they will be able to do some other things that you uh might not have the energy and speed to do so at the end of the day it all boils down to collaboration like everybody bringing in their own strength so if we build an economy around uh the, the first is that everybody has to be valued everybody contribution is valued that's the first thing uh the second thing is that uh differences have to be also valued and the uh, the second uh, the third is that everybody can contribute something meaningful if given the right platform so if we do mm -hmm. this uh, basic principles in terms of how everybody collaborates on technology i think what will happen is we'll have a utopia if not it's going to be a dystopia i think that's that's just it well thank you very much um uh, amara it was really fantastic speaking with you i think uh, i don't have any more questions to ask you and uh, i'm sure you're also very busy um but it was really great that you weighed in um and uh, educators perspective is one that we need that uh, that i have not yet had and so um i i appreciate i appreciate that very much and uh, is there anything else that you would like to let uh, my listeners know uh, or that something a book that interests you or that you wrote or um, some some project that you want people to work on with you or anything at all please go for it yeah uh, for me i think uh, the first thing is 
how do we get designers and developers to build technology around children? Uh, because it's something I'm really, really passionate about. So if there are developers or designers out there that want to build technologies, even if it's going to start the whole world, but uh, the fact is that if we build around children, everybody at some point gets to use that technology very well. So I love to work on projects that prioritize the child. Uh, that's the first thing. So, uh, and we're inviting everybody to come on board and uh, work with us at Weinstein Impact Lab because the idea is how do we make children leaders of technology? Uh, they are suffering a lot of problems in terms of their mental health, in terms of their self-esteem, because they do not see themselves as leaders, tech leaders. They see themselves as tech users. So we need to move that. There has to be that paradigm shift that if you have access to technology, uh, you are already a leader. Uh, to some extent, there is a way you can manipulate that technology to solve problems for others. So if you have this mindset, for every child that opens WhatsApp, for every child that opens Roblox, they have this mindset that you can actually use any technology in the world to solve problems. If you are going to, if somebody else is going to use that technology, then somebody else is going to need something. Somebody else is in another part of the world that does not have the access that you have, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have the tools that you have. Uh, whatever uh, little, uh, little you are taking for granted, to them it matters a lot. It is really quite an important uh, uh, topic that you're working on and uh, please keep up the conversation and let's, uh, let's, let's, let's discuss further. And uh, there will be comments in the comment sections. People can leave comments. Maybe I didn't ask the right questions. Please let me know. If, if you wish that I had asked a certain question, uh, please let me know so I can improve. And um, yeah, it was a beautiful thing to speak with you, Amara. And uh, I wish you a, a great day. This show is published every week on Wednesday at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. in London, 2 a.m. in L.A., It is published on YouTube visually and with just the audio on all major podcasting platforms, that is Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and many, many others. You can also find it on my website, johanneskastner.com, and go to podcast, and there you can see all of the platforms on which this show is available. It would help us if you were to like what you like, so if you, if you like a show that give it a thumbs up. And if you don't like something, please give it a thumbs down. That helps us to improve. And if you could give us reasons why you like or don't like something in the comments, that would help us to improve the show. Next week, I will be talking about cryptocurrencies and the blockchain with Flavio Escavera. Especially with um, this new space of distributed ledger technology, blockchain and crypto are concepts that are very correlated. But uh, separating the origins, crypto becomes from, comes from cryptography. That is a method to add um, privacy and security to information. The blockchain uh, by itself is a, a digitalization of something that is very old. That is the, the ledger books, the old ledger books that were used for accounting. <laughs>